Important safety information. Levulin Keristic, amino levulinic acid hydrochloride for topical solution 20%, plus blue light illumination using the Blue U Blue Light Photodynamic Therapy Illuminator, is indicated for the treatment of minimally to moderately thick actinic keratoses, grade 1 or 2, of the face or scalp. The blue U is generally indicated to treat dermatological indications. The blue U is specifically indicated to treat moderate inflammatory acne vulgaris. When using the blue U for acne, do not use this device with photosensitizing drugs. Levulin keristic is contraindicated in patients with cutaneous photosensitivity at wavelengths of 400 to 450 nanometers, porphyria, or known allergies to porphyrins, and in patients with known sensitivity to any of the components of the levulin keristic for topical solution. Levulin keristic has not been tested on patients with inherited or acquired coagulation defects. It is possible that concomitant use of other known photosensitizing agents might increase the photosensitivity reaction of actinic keratoses treated with the levulin keristic. Most common adverse events include stinging and or burning, itching, erythema, or edema. Severe stinging and or burning at one or more lesions being treated was reported by at least 50% of patients at some time during treatment in all clinical studies. However, less than 3% of patients discontinued light treatment due to stinging and or burning. Patients should avoid exposure of the photosensitized lesions to sunlight or prolonged or intense light for at least 40 hours. During light treatment, both patients and medical personnel should be provided with blue blocking protective eyewear, as specified in the Blue U operating instructions, to minimize ocular exposure. Please see full prescribing information. Hi. I'm Scott Lundahl, Vice President of Regulatory Affairs and Intellectual Property at DUSA Pharmaceuticals. When I first came to DUSA 15 years ago, I was in charge of designing the Blue U, DUSA's Blue Light Photodynamic Therapy Illuminator. Hours of meticulous research and much trial and error resulted in the light unit you see before you today. Let's take a look back at our journey to create DUSA's Blue U. To understand how and why we arrived at our decision to develop the Blue U Blue Light, we need to take a look at the historical background of photodynamic therapy, or as it is more commonly called, PDT. PDT is a medical treatment that uses a photosensitizing drug, which is a drug that can be activated by light exposure, and a light source to activate the applied drug. The result is an activated oxygen molecule that can destroy nearby cells. PDT has roots as far back as the 1900s. Early research was focused primarily on locating tumor cells. This all changed in the early 1970s when it was discovered that light could also activate a photosensitizer and destroy tumor cells. This inspired a number of studies to explore the clinical application of PDT in a wide range of cancers. Because researchers were primarily concerned with treating large, bulky tumors, Red light was used to activate photosensitizers because of its ability to penetrate deeply into tissue. As we began our PDT research, we knew that there were three major treatment components needed in order to optimize the efficacy of PDT. These were the light source, the photosensitizer, and the target tissue. Each of these treatment components are highly interrelated and a change to any one of these factors can have an effect on the outcome. For example, if a light wavelength is used that penetrates deeply into the target tissue but is not well absorbed by the photosensitizer, the light dose must be increased to compensate for the lower absorption. During the development of Levulan for the treatment of AKs, we were aware of these complex interactions and of the effects of varying these parameters. We focused our efforts on finding the right light source to optimize the light source factors in order to produce the best clinical outcome. 
For a light source to be effective in PDT, it has to fulfill three major requirements. First, the wavelength has to correspond to one which is absorbed by the photosensitizer. Although Levulan is not a photosensitizer itself, when it is taken up by cells, it is rapidly converted to the strong photosensitizer, protoporphyrin 9, otherwise known as PP9. The absorption profile of this photosensitizer has a series of peaks. The maximum absorption occurs in an area of the spectrum called the Soray band, which is in the blue-violet portion of the spectrum at about 410 nanometers. There are four additional bands at longer wavelengths called Q-bands, where weaker absorption of light occurs. The weakest one is at the red end of the spectrum at 635 nanometers. Lights such as the red LED sources, intense pulse light, and pulse dye laser with longer wavelengths target the Q-bands. These are less absorbed, making them less efficient. One of the reasons we chose to work with blue light is because it met the basic criteria for optimal activation of the PP9 formed by Levulan. Blue light is very closely matched to the absorption profile for PP9, making it a very efficient and highly absorbed light source, and therefore a very efficient activator of PP9. The second requirement is that the wavelength must be able to reach the desired depth of penetration into the tissue. Basically, the longer the wavelength, the deeper the penetration of light into the tissue. Blue light penetrates the skin up to about 2 millimeters. Light in the red regions can penetrate between 8 and 10 millimeters. And in the infrared range, it can penetrate up to 20 millimeters. While DUSA was developing Levulan, practitioners were using red light, despite its lower absorption efficiency, because they were focused on treating large, deep tumors. DUSA realized that since the epidermis is less than 2 millimeters thick, and AKs are epidermal lesions, Blue light could potentially be used as a light source because penetration was sufficient for the treatment of AKs. Since blue light could reach our target tissue, we could take advantage of its high absorption efficiency. The third requirement for effective PDT is that the light source must have enough power to produce a photodynamic response. Now, unlike wavelength and photosensitizer absorption bands, the amount of energy that it takes to treat a particular tissue or disease is not easy to predict from laboratory measurements. This is where clinical trials come into play. DUSA conducted clinical trials that established the amount of blue light required to perform successful PDT for AKs. This dose turned out to be 10 joules per centimeter squared, delivered at a rate of 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared. This light dose was later substantiated in DUSA's phase three clinical trials, which formed the basis of FDA's approval of Levulan for the treatment of actinic keratosis. Levulan Keratostic plus blue light illumination using the Blue U Blue Light Photodynamic Therapy Illuminator is indicated for the treatment of minimally to moderately thick actinic keratoses, grade one or two, of the face or scalp. At this point, we knew blue light would meet the requirements for effective PDT. If it was our intention to treat just one small AK, we could have used just about any blue light source. We felt that treating just one lesion at a time wouldn't be convenient for potential users, so we set out to design a blue light to treat the entire face or scalp in one session. Keep in mind that such a light would have to deliver the same light dose to any area of the face or scalp and do it consistently time and time again. We also needed to do all of this with a light source that was reasonably priced. So let's take a look at some of the challenges we faced and how we overcame them. Potential target lesions may be located anywhere on the face or scalp, and neither are flat or uniform surfaces. This presented a number of challenges in our design of a light source. First, let's discuss the issue of lesion location in the treatment area. When I say treatment area, I'm referring to the light field or illuminated area that is produced by a light source. When light is delivered from an ordinary light source, such as a light bulb or a small LED source, to a lesion located in the middle of the treatment area, light rays hit it from multiple angles. Some come directly from the light source and others come from the sides. All of the light rays hitting the target area are added up in the skin and contribute to the total light dose. Understanding that light dose is really the sum of the light rays coming from all directions, a lesion near the middle of the treatment area will be bathed in light from all angles and directions. 
Because of this, the light dose observed at the center of the treatment area will be maximal. At the edges of the treatment area, the light dose delivered to a lesion will be much less because the light hits these parts of the treatment area from fewer angles. Light rays may come directly from the light source and one side of the treatment area, but since you are at the edge of the treatment area, there are no rays coming from the other side. As a result, the adding up of the rays is less, which results in a lower light dose for a lesion near the edge of the treatment area. To illustrate this point, take a look at a hypothetical grid that demonstrates the amount of light delivered to different sections of a treatment area. We see that the maximum light dose is delivered around the center, but it decreases significantly at the edges. Another phenomenon that can affect the light dose delivered is that the light intensity diminishes significantly when you increase the distance from the light source. If we take a flashlight, we can measure the light coming from the flashlight at any given point. But if we double the distance, the new measurement would yield only one quarter of the original strength of the light. When we were designing the Blue U, we wanted to make sure that we addressed all of the issues we just reviewed. We addressed these issues in several unique and patented ways. First, to make sure that we could treat all of the lesions on the face or scalp with one light treatment, we designed the size of the Blue U treatment area to be large. We reviewed what is known as human factors data, such as the size of the average human head, and designed it to be able to illuminate the 95th percentile of a patient's face or scalp. This helped ensure that we would be able to treat all lesions in one light exposure. We still needed to make sure the Blue U was able to maximize delivery of light to the treatment edges. To do this, we developed the unique folded U-shaped fluorescent tubes and mounted them horizontally. This allowed us to extend the length of the tubes out beyond the back of the ears so that light rays were still coming from all angles, making the light dose uniform regardless of where in the treatment area a lesion might be located. While this worked great for lesions near the ears, we also had to address the same phenomenon at the top and bottom of the face. But we couldn't just make the blue U taller in the way that we made the tubes longer for the ears, because that would cause the unit to hit your shoulders, making it impossible to get into the blue U. We solved this problem through the spacing of the tubes at the top and bottom. If you look at a blue U, you will notice that the tubes are spaced much closer together at the top and bottom than in the middle. This causes more light to be produced at the top and bottom, compensating for the light falloff seen at the edges of the treatment field. What we really did was design a very tall blue U and then folded it over at the top and bottom, like you would trifold a letter to get it into a smaller envelope. So now, while we had a consistent light dose from ear to ear, so to speak, we found that the light dose could vary significantly with changes in distance. The requirement for such precise positioning would not be convenient for either the patient or the practitioner. To mitigate this, we took advantage of a phenomenon known as the integrating sphere effect. In short, if a light source is enclosed in a sphere with highly reflecting walls, the light intensity will be nearly the same everywhere inside the sphere. But in a device designed to treat patients, you can't really enclose everything in a sphere. So we had to leave one section open in order to allow a patient to get in and out of the unit. Because of this opening, we did not get the perfect light intensity that you do inside a sphere, but we did significantly reduce the need to precisely position the patient for treatment. To further maximize the uniformity of light, we also used highly polished stainless steel reflective walls behind the tubes. In order to design the Blue U for the production of blue light and to ensure wavelength stability, a wide range of light source technologies was evaluated for both their short and long-term stability characteristics. It turned out that fluorescent tubes produced very stable wavelengths because of the phosphor within the tubes. Once a phosphor is chosen, the wavelength is not affected by either temperature or aging. In order to compensate for any changes in optical power output due to temperature, aging, or the local line voltage, we also included a microprocessor-based feedback control system that continuously monitors and adjusts the light output from the fluorescent tubes. This system ensures that the Blue U light output is within plus or minus one milliwatt of the required 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared the Blue U is designed to produce. This system also notifies the user if the power output is not within that range, such as may occur when the tubes are at the end of their useful life or if there is a malfunction within the Blue U. 
Finally, because fluorescent light technology easily adapts to large treatment areas and blue light can be delivered efficiently and economically, the Blue U design simply made the most sense. Other technologies could have been utilized, but at a much higher cost. A quick figure for comparison is to look at the cost in dollars per square centimeter of treatment area. This is a rough measure of how much the technology costs to treat a given area with a given light dose. The cost for alternative technologies at the time the Blue U was developed was quite high and remains so to this day. Compare that to blue light fluorescent technology, which runs only about $7 per square centimeter. The economics of the Blue U design, again, simply makes sense. We finally had all of the key elements in place to design, produce, and clinically test our light source. Our light source delivers a highly uniform light dose to lesions located anywhere on the face or scalp. All of this is made possible in a cost-effective design, the Blue U, Blue Light Photodynamic Therapy Illuminator. Levulin Keristic for topical solution, 20%, plus blue light illumination using the Blue U Blue Light Photodynamic Therapy Illuminator is indicated for the treatment of minimally to moderately thick actinic keratoses, grade 1 or 2, of the face or scalp. Now that we have given you this overview, we hope that you have a better understanding of the challenges and complexities we overcame to make the Blue U the commercial and clinical success that it is today. We at DUSA stand behind the quality and efficacy of our products and remain committed to delivering solutions for dermatology. For full product information, please visit www.dusapharma.com or call us at 1-877-533-3872.